Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Anuska Taylor. So great to have you here. And I'm so grateful also for all your support with my channel. Please do keep subscribing and sharing and liking my videos because it makes such a difference to getting my videos out to more people. So today I'm talking about the difference between public speaking training and voice training. And you really want to understand the difference so that you know what it is that you really need. Because for many people, they are one of the same thing. And in my experience, they are very different. So when I tell people I'm a voice coach that predominantly works with speakers, usually I get something along the lines of, oh, you help people with public speaking. You help people with pauses or pace or that kind of thing when they're presenting. And I'm like, yeah, that's an element of it, but that's a very small element of actually what I do with people. So it's become very apparent to me, particularly over the last couple of months, actually, that there is really this confusion about the difference between the two. And as I say, people really think they are the same thing. So in today's video, I want to talk about the difference and then you can make a more informed decision about what you really need. Now, it may be you need both but it may be you only need one. So when you understand the difference, then you know what you're looking for. So I hear from clients all the time that they have gone on public speaking training. They've done presentation skills training and only at the end, they've realized it hasn't really addressed my voice at all. It's less about the voice and more about presentation skills. But remembering that the voice is the instrument we use to present, to storytell, to speak in meetings, etc. So it really should be central to anything we do around public speaking. But that isn't really where the focus of public speaking and presentation skills training predominantly is. And this is in my experience. I remember about five or six years ago talking at a Toastmasters event and I was going as a voice coach to kind of give some tools and techniques to help the people in this group work with their voice more and find more freedom and effortlessness in their voice. And it became really apparent to me in that session that this was all really new information and that predominantly what they were learning in these sessions was around how to present in front of an audience, not about the instrument that you use to present with. So this isn't to diss that at all, because I think it's really important and it's a brilliant organization, but we really want to make sure our voice is functioning well first before we worry about presenting skills. So what might the presentation skills, public speaking skills look like? What might you expect from that kind of training? So it's generally more around structure and content of a presentation. And then the delivery of that is more around body language and gestures. So what do I do with my hands? How do I stand? Where do I look? And also from a voice perspective, it's more what I would consider surface voice work. So it's things like Paralinguistic tools like pacing, pacing your speech, things like pauses. Are you using pauses? Are you slowing down? Are you giving people a chance to absorb your words? So all of that, again, I'm not saying this isn't important, but I'm saying for me, this is putting the cart before the horse. And this for me comes secondary to the voice. So you might find yourself working on storytelling. It could be crafting structuring a presentation. It could be, how do I open a presentation in an engaging way? How do I close a presentation in an engaging way? How do I stand on stage? What do I do with my hands? All of that kind of thing. And it could be things like voice variation. So they're the types of things that you would expect to work on in public speaking or presentation skills training. And it's generally run in groups, even if it's small groups. So this is more easily taught in groups. Whereas voice work is very, very personal. There is, it's very difficult to just give one exercise to everyone. And yes, I do teach in groups, but very, very small groups because how we use our voice is so different. There are so many variations for us all. So it's very hard to just give one exercise and give everyone the same thing. So I think that's also partly why this type of thing doesn't get taught in public speaking training because it's hard to do in a group. But also because in my experience, that type of training isn't run by voice teachers or voice experts. It's generally run by people with communication backgrounds. 
So really important stuff, but is not going to address your voice. So from a voice perspective, what's really important is your voice must be functioning freely, openly and powerfully, because otherwise you're never going to be able to access those dynamics and that expression in your voice. You're never going to be able to project your voice with ease. There's always going to be some kind of limitation. So what might this look like from a voice perspective? If you're thinking, well, do I need the voice work first or do I need the voice work at all? Or could I just go straight to public speaking training? So I'm just going to give you a few examples. But if in any way you feel like your voice is hindered or limited, then you probably want to start with the voice. So it could be Again, this list isn't exhaustive, but these are some ideas. Your voice is weak or quiet and you struggle to project your voice. And in fact, you may feel you have to rely on a mic to project your voice. I talk a lot about this. I've talked about mics before. Remember a mic amplifies, it doesn't clarify your voice. So it's only gonna amplify what you put in. So if your voice is weak, it's just gonna amplify a weak voice. It's not gonna magically make your voice sound stronger. Your voice is frequently raspy or croaky. Now you may find this when you've been speaking for long periods of time, the end of the day, or you may just find your voice is always raspy and croaky. But either way, there's something functional going on there that you really need to address. You mumble and you find clear articulation really challenging. Now my work is not accent specific. I love accents, I don't care what your accent is, where you're from in the world, because I believe all voices can be can find freedom, clarity and power. So you do need to have clarity in your voice though, wherever you're from, whatever your accent. You run out of breath easily. And this could be to do with sort of how you're breathing when you're speaking. So again, that could be a big topic for some people. You speak at the back of your throat and you sort of swallow your sound. This is incredibly common. And again, you're never gonna find full expression and dynamics in your voice if your voice is being pulled back when you speak. This is actually incredibly common. And one of the main things I work on with private clients is helping them to bring the voice out and forward. You also could be someone that has a lot of nasality in your voice. So there's a lot of sound going through your nose. So your voice lacks that kind of richness and depth. So again, that would be something you would want to address before doing public speaking or presentation skills training, because they're not gonna really address that. You speak very low in your range or even very high in your range and the problem with that is you'll probably feel like you get stuck in a certain part of your voice and so actually it's learning to find your optimal pitch and then you can move your voice around with far more freedom you can find that modulation and that pitch movement without feeling like you're stuck in a, a room quote unquote either at the bottom of your voice or the top of your voice and when you have that movement in your voice that's when your voice not only functions better, so it feels better, but it sounds more engaging. You could also find, and again, it depends on how aware you are, how kinesthetically aware you are of your voice and your body, but you may notice there's a lot of constriction through your throat or your neck, or even your upper chest. So that is usually a sign that there's a lot of sort of shallow, high breathing, that you're pushing the voice from the throat, and again, that would have to be addressed because that's not gonna be addressed in public speaking training. And finally, and this is potentially kind of all encompassing and it could, lots of things could fall under this, but you find that your voice feels tired a lot, feels strained a lot, maybe you lose your voice frequently. And I find this is very common, particularly amongst trainers, teachers and lecturers who are speaking for hours every day. And often these groups of people are never taught how to use their voice. So they're just trying to manage and muddle through. And I've worked with many teachers over the years and lecturers, and they're just not given the basic skills in how their voice really functions. So again, this is basic function of the voice, because if the voice isn't functioning at the most basic level, you're never gonna get ultimate expression and freedom in your voice. So I just want to leave you with a piano analogy because I think sometimes sort of taking yourself out of the voice can help because the voice is a bit abstract. But imagine that we had the most amazing pianist in the world and I gave them a piano to play, but the piano had missing keys or some of the hammers were broken or the pedals weren't working properly. 
there's only going to be so much they could do. If I said, I want you to play this really dynamic, expressive, exciting song, but there's all of these sort of missing pieces to the piano or things aren't quite working properly, they're never going to be able to access the full dynamics, expression and power and pitch variation in that song because it's just not possible because the instrument doesn't allow. And what is I really want you to understand is as a speaker, as a public speaker, you are both the piano and the piano player. And in my experience, most of the time, public speaking presentation skills training focuses on you as the piano player and not as you as the piano. You need both. Now, if you feel your voice is already functioning really well and everything's great, then brilliant. And you just feel you want to be, feel a little bit more confident with public speaking and engaging an audience, then that is brilliant. And then absolutely go and find some public speaking training. But if you resonate with any of the things that I've spoken about in terms of vocal function, then you want to work with a voice coach first because you're not going to get that level of depth in your voice. And even if you do, it's probably going to be done in a more kind of cookie cutter approach versus addressing your voice as an individual. And we all use our voice differently. So you want it to be addressed for you as an individual. I hope that that's helped. Please feel free to post any comments or ask me any questions below. And just as a quick reminder, I have a limited time special offer to work with me available till this Friday, 14th of April. It's actually World Voice Day on Sunday. So this is a special offer, a special invite for World Voice Day. If you think, yeah, I need help with my voice. The public speaking training has been great, but it hasn't really addressed, as she said, the issues I'm experiencing in my voice. Then I have a special four week mini package. You can work with me privately online so you can be anywhere in the world and I will help you to address your voice in your unique way. So I will help you to find your most powerful, expressive, dynamic and confident voice. So then when you do do any of those kinds of public speaking or presentation skills training, you're coming from a place of really understanding and knowing how to access that freedom and power in your voice. So then you can just get the gold from that training versus worrying about, oh, my voice feels stuck in the back of my throat, I'm running out of breath, my voice is in my nose. All of that is not going to be addressed. So it's a four week mini program. I'll put the details below, but you do have to purchase by Friday, this Friday. So hurry if you are interested. You don't have to start straight away. You just have to purchase by Friday. But you can always send me a message as well if you are interested but thank you so much. I hope this has been useful and I will see you on my next video and happy World Voice Day.